is this has been the motor uh, that's been in my car for five years. So before that, it was in my other drift car as the stock LS1 for about two years. So in total, this, this motor has been abused for about seven years total. So uh, in the last five years, um, I've driven this motor really, really hard. And coming into the 2018 Pro 2 season, I was just going to leave it in the car uh, and drive it for another season uh, and then take it apart at the end of the season. But what I found out was there's a little bit of a uh, crack on the block. So I drove this thing so hard that the block is cracking from the outside in. Uh, so let us uh, let me show you guys how to disassemble a LS1. This, is, uh, this has got some aftermarket hardware like the ARP head studs, uh, ARP main studs. So it's going to be a little different. But for you guys at home, starting out with the stock LS1, the process is going to be identical. First things first, we're going to take off the manifolds. It's a real straightforward process. Um, these manifolds are by Hooker. They were kind of tricky to put in. All right, shout out to my good friends at Beachworks. Uh, they've been supporting me since I was in Pro-Am in 2013. So they're really good injector companies. All my cars run their injectors. Now I've had nothing but great experiences. So next time you guys are shopping for injectors, hit up Beachworks, tell them Spike sent you, um, and they'll be able to help you guys out. The first thing to do right here is to disassemble the exhaust manifold. It's really straightforward. It's basically just four, uh, five 10 millimeter bolts. Here's your exhaust manifold gaskets. They're usually metal. Just set them aside. You're going to reuse these. Um, this set of headers I got, uh, they're made by Hooker, um, they're ceramic coated and they're, they're the biggest runner they have, I think it's close to about 2 inches. Um, and this is actually a really good setup, the only exception is, or my only complaint, is that to put these in and out you really have to um, like drop the motor out of the car. So it's not like the DAF innovation kit where they can just slide in with the motor in the car, you really gotta either drop the motor or bring the motor up, it's a lot of hassle. Uh, just to put these in. So they're great manifolds, um, but if you're not pushing really serious horsepower, I'd probably recommend the DAP. If you guys don't have a gun, um, I really recommend the Ryobi. Uh, they're not sponsoring me or anything, but I have had really good experiences with their 18-volt uh, uh, Ryobi gun. It's got a three-speed selector, so you can go all the way up to, I think, 200 foot-pounds of torque on the gun. Uh, it's got some LEDs on there. And uh, it's a really good impact gun. So anything from lug nuts, head bolts, uh, this gun will do it. plugs out just take a quick look at them and see what the condition of your plugs are they should be nice and brown so this one here would be a good example of a good burn nice and brown these ones are all pretty white maybe they're a little bit lean and then you can see some speckles on there maybe that's detonation But uh, we'll tell once we pull the motor, uh, once we pull the heads off. Exhaust manifold off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, the valve cover off. Do it as well. So when you have the valve cover off, just take a look on the inside and uh, see if there's any buildup of sludge or oil. This one looks pretty clear. I welded a baffle here because I had a uh, I had an exit port for the blow-by, so I welded a baffle and it kept the oil from spraying over. So uh, valve cover looks good. <laughs> Valve rocker retainer bolts. So there's one for uh, each 
valve rocker. That's going to be the same size as the cover, so 7 16. And I know there's a, a spec or a certain pattern. Frankly, I've never done it, so I didn't. like that. Okay, so what happens is, um, this is the push rod. The push rod transfers the force from the cam, which is in the middle of the motor spinning. So this push rod is going up and down. And then the rocker has a divot for where the push rod sits. And then it's got a flat tappet where it pushes down on the valves. So every time the push rod comes up, it's basically, when the push rods come up, it's going to push down the valve and it's going to have this kind of a motion and that's what actuates your valves. Alright, so I like to have a plastic bag handy. Um, that way I can put everything in there. So when you're taking it out, just take a quick look at the push rods. Make sure it's not bent. Uh, these ones I have in my car. They are the comp cam. You guys can see them. But they're the Comp Cam 7638, that's the part number. Uh, comp Cam Magnesium Push Rods. And these are stock length. I think these you can get them for about $100, $120 a set. So the process to, to taking off the heads is we got uh, five 10 millimeter bolts up top and then we have uh, five sets of bigger uh, head bolts on the bottom. These are all APR hardware. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off these five bolts up top and they're all 12 point so you'll have to use a socket like that. You can't use a six point socket or else it won't work. Be a 7 13 12 point. That's what you guys are going to need. Okay, so here's the head, and then we're going to take a look at it, but this head gasket has held up pretty well. This is the MLS steel from uh, GM, it's for their 2000, I think their 2000 and above uh, LS motors all came with this MLS setup, multi-layer steel head gasket. This head gasket was really cheap, I think it ran about 60 bucks for the set of two. So if you guys are just doing like a moderate uh, stock motor build, um, you don't need anything crazy head gasket. This one will work just fine. Man, still putting... All right, so this gasket actually can be reused. Um, I don't know if you guys want to reuse it, but it can. 
very nice gasket set. It's very strong. So this is after five years of abuse. All right, so that's after five years. I would say that's reasonably decent, right? So at 16 pounds on E85, there's no signs of detonation. Uh, usually detonation, you'll see little speckles or you'll see little pits on the head. Heads look like. They're actually in extremely nice condition. If you have detonation, what you're gonna have in here is you're gonna have like a bunch of little pits, right? It, it looks like somebody took a screwdriver and they just went boom, 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 boom and just pounded in little pits. So, so far, it looks like there's uh, no real issues on the quench zones. Um, the quench zone are the flat parts of the head. That's where when the piston come up, it doesn't quite touch it, but it flushes the air and it makes it swirl. So these are quench zones. So everything looks pretty good. The head looks good for five years. Um, and, and you see how clean this block is? So don't change your oil too often. No, just kidding. But I haven't needed to change my oil that often. And it looks very clean. All right. But do use a... Um, do use a rust inhibitor like uh, water wetter. I sometimes run it with just water and it does get rusty and all the rust does impede the transfer of uh, heat from the head to the water. So the head looks pretty good. I'm really happy with the results so far. Um, haven't seen any real issues. So pretty blessed. Looking good after five years. Oh, we're gonna put this. gonna pick up all the washers up top first go. okay so we got all the bolts or all the nuts and washers in there we're gonna seal it up if you really have a hard time remembering it, just take a marker, write in head stud bolt, head stud nuts, and then put them on the side. You won't lose any. All right, so let's see what it looks like. Uh, pretty darn good. All right, another thing you should do is put some rags. So I have paper towels in my cylinder heads. Uh, it's it's not in a, on the intake. I have paper towels on the intake. It's not so important when you're pulling off the heads. But if you're working on the car and you have the top end off, this can save your ass. Because then you don't have any bolts or anything falling into the head. Alright, let's look at the cylinders. Alright. So the cylinders all look really nice after five years. And if you're looking at the block on the inside, you see how clean that is? Must be the magic of blow-by. <laughs> when you get crazy ethanol washing down your, your motor, that's what happens. Now, I don't know if it's, well, I just use, uh, I actually use Royal Purple, because I read a review that it did really good um, against uh, bearing on bearing contact. Uh, so I've been using Royal Purple for the last seven years and I really haven't blown anything up. Uh, the one time I didn't use Royal Purple, I did blow something up. And then so here's the heads. Um, as you can see, everything is pretty clean. Seems to be a lot of wetness. Maybe it's all the 
maybe I have a lot of oil in there, maybe like an oil uh, control ring issue. I did gap the number one and two rings really big for nitrous and booze, so I have a lot of blow-by issues, but uh, the motor seems to be okay. Super clean, right? It actually looks like it's brand new. Um, I wouldn't even wash it if I was going to reassemble this. Okay, so that's good news. The motor is pretty healthy. Uh, so the motor is pretty healthy. Um, it's really clean and I, and even if I didn't tear it down, I think this would have been a really nice setup. I could still drive on this for probably years. But the problem that I do have is I got this hairline crack right here on the block. So water is actually leaking out. And um, I'm thinking the problem is with this mount because it's Daft Innovation mount. It, it only uses four of the six mounting holes. So I'm thinking maybe there's a lot of stress on the back right here, twisting this motor. So next time I would probably use a motor, uh, like a motor plate that uses all six holes. So it's gonna give this motor a lot more structural integrity and that probably wouldn't have happened. And I would have probably been dr driving on this car for a lot longer. Um, so yeah, this was doing uh, five years of at least um, 16 pounds on 15 16 pounds on a smaller blower and then 15 16 pounds on the TVS 2300 This is gonna be the end of today's episode. I'm gonna put this up on YouTube so you guys can watch it Subscribe to the channel uh, click on the bell to get notifications when I post new videos and give this video two thumbs up um, We're gonna be taking the rest apart tomorrow and you guys are gonna see what the bearings look like because the car has been uh, heavily used with E85 fuel and there's a lot of blow by since the gaps are big, so maybe there's bearing issues that you know we're, we're not aware of. Uh, plus, I haven't changed the oil that often, so seven, seven, eight times in the last five years isn't a lot, you know. Uh, so everything looks good. The cylinders are really nice. Pistons look super bomb. I could put them back in another car, no problem whatsoever. Uh, the heads are clean. Um, no detonation at 16 pounds, 18 pounds. I've gone up to like 21 pounds. That's that's the craziest time, right? When the a supercharger pulley hooks up, the boost goes through the roof. Uh, so I'm excited to get the rest of, the rest of this torn down tomorrow and share with you guys. Uh, so stay tuned. Appreciate the like, share with your friends on Facebook, and uh, let's see what we can do, alright? Thank you so much for watching. Spike Chin out.